The hobby, the craft of home distillation is often about restraint. Times when you wanna rush things, but you know that being patient is worth it. Times when you could take quantity, a whole lot of product. You force yourself to be restrained and take quality instead. Today, today, <laughs> we're finally fighting back. No, it's not beer. I, I know it's a beer keg. It, it's not beer, okay? <laughs> How's it going, Chasers? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm Jesse, this is still it, and that is a big old keg of faints. Well, actually, it's about half full. It's about 10 liters in there. That's not the point. The point is that uh, during your average runs, you know, so you make a, a mash, a wash, whatever you want to call it, uh, you ferment it out, you then distill it, and at the end of the distillation process, you've got this decision to make in terms of what you're keeping and what you're not keeping. Four shots for sure, yep, get rid of them, put them in the poison bottle, fire lighter, whatever you want to use it for. Uh, but the faints, the stuff that is uh, heads and tails that just aren't good enough to make the cut, well, I would strongly recommend that you hold on to those guys. I separate mine out and uh, put them into kegs, but uh, today, today, we're making whiskey for nothing. This is, of course, not the first time, stay, <laughs> I have distilled faints on the channel. Uh, I did the Chimera run a long time ago, and the idea with that is all of the faints, everything I collected at any point in time, I just threw them all together and distilled them just kind of for the fun of it to see what would happen. I have changed my plan a little bit. Now uh, I separate basically into two different kinds of faints. One is whiskey and a little bit of rum maybe if it feels like it makes sense to me all go into this keg everything else vodka fruit gin all that sort of stuff goes into a separate keg to do something different with and the idea is that i want to be able to make a, a basically a free faint whiskey so first of all i'm going to tip a little bit of this out so we can figure out what we're working with Whoa. Uh, and yes, as you can probably tell, there is some aged product in here as well. Uh, if at any point in time I come across product that is aging and it's just, it's not gonna work. That goes in this container as well. 68% ABV. So uh, I definitely need to proof this down a little <laughs> before it goes into the still. Let me do that right now. And while the still is warming up, I'll talk about why for you, Doing it this way may not be the best idea. We're set up, we're running. Now what in the Sam Hill did I mean by insinuating that this is the right thing for me to do but not necessarily for you to do? Kind of cryptic, right? Well, here goes. I'm a YouTuber, and because it's my job to make videos, not really spirits. I have to make spirits to make the video. You get the idea, right? I am always having to make something different because uh, let's face it, watching me make exactly the same recipe for the 49th time with a slight little tweak to improve it, that's not good YouTube. And because of that, I am constantly making things that are just different from each other. If, however, I was not a YouTuber, I would probably be making, I don't know, maybe three, four different kinds of brown aged spirits, and I would be doing them on repeat, doing slight tweaks, trying to uh, improve and master those recipes. If that was what I was doing, what I would be doing is collecting the faints uh, from a run and then adding it back into the next run. You don't get a quote unquote free whiskey at the end of it, but what you do get is a free efficiency boost on every whiskey you make. The faints from batch, I don't know, 37, <laughs> get taken and added into the low wines of batch 38, uh, giving batch 38 a bump in efficiency, the amount of whiskey you're gonna get out of it. So, you know. You get that for free at least. <laughs> but uh, that's the cool thing about home distilling, right? Do what makes you happy. Do whatever works for you. I need to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's show, Into the AM. Into the AM make a whole host of basically really 
dope clothing stuff. Uh, you probably know them if you've been watching the channel for any length of time for these awesome graphic tees, which I absolutely love. But what you may not know is that they make uh, some more low-key stuff like this as well. Why would I be buying stuff like this from a company on the other side of the globe? Well, uh, the pricing is really reasonable, shipping is really reasonable, and they're just really freaking good products. I picked up some of their awesome ass hoodies that are just as good as everything else they make. But right now, this is way too hot. I'm cooking just making this. And a little teaser, I am actually working on something with Into the AM. It's coming soon, it's not ready yet, but it is going to be dope. So, if you want to pick up some cool Into the AM stuff, shirts, graphic shirts, hoodies, undies, whatever you want, uh, go to intotheam.com slash ctc to get 10% off. You've probably noticed that yes, I am running this with uh, two plates, not as a pot still run. And those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, probably know that I tend to err on the side of double pot still runs, not column stilled stuff. So today I'm using two plates for two reasons. Number one is I err on the side of pot still stuff. And uh, I don't know, it'd be nice to explore, give plates and column plates for, you know, whiskey and rum and stuff like that, a little bit more of a chance, use it more. I know some of you guys like seeing that. So there's that. Number two is I have a little sample of, uh, you know, the faints that are in this still right now. And they are a very interesting mix of peated whiskey, corn, a little bit of corn, and rum. All of these things mixed together might just be a little bit, I don't know, a little bit weird and overwhelming all crammed together. So the thinking is that this spirit, but seeing as it's all jumbled up and mixed up, might benefit greatly from um, making everything more subtle, more restrained, make it a little bit prettier and let the wood characteristics shine through. That's the idea. Right now I am squeezing out the heads nice and slowly. I didn't bother with four shots simply because I'm not going to keep any of these faints. The heads are all going into the fire lighter bucket and the tails, um, well I'm going to throw those out because I'm not going to have much use for them. Now, a lot of you are probably asking, weren't these all heads and tails beforehand? How, like, how do you expect to get anything usable out of this when that's all they were? 100%, I get what you're saying, but you have to remember that especially with a pot still, uh, distillation is not a clean process. So you don't get all of the four shots and then all of the heads and then all of the hearts and all the tails. In reality, they're all smeared together. So when you first start collecting heads, they will be, I don't know, I'm just throwing silly numbers out there, 85% heads and a little bit of hearts and then as you get closer to the hearts it's going to slowly switch those ratios to the point where you're taking hearts but it's still actually i don't know 15 20 percent heads depending on how brutal you are with your cuts anyway this is going to be a pretty long slow run so let me leave you with some b-roll and i'll catch you over on the bench So proofed down to 63% and we have, I don't know, about seven, seven and a half liters at 63%. Uh, I'm going to take this opportunity to mess around and try some different woods to age on with the idea that uh, once these are, I don't know, like a year, we're going to have some fun, you know, seeing what the different woods did, uh, but also blend them back together to... Uh, see if we can make some interesting flavor profiles. So we have uh, cherry, medium toast. Uh, and this one, we're going to go with some uh, chestnut with a bourbon char. Over here, we're going, um, eh, come out of here, uh, birch with a bourbon char. And down on the end, 
we have uh, apple with a medium. So these are actually quite large pieces of wood. Uh, I will definitely be checking in on these shortly, you know, within two months. Obviously, I need to make some more of my PTFE gaskets just for these two. I guess I'll close them up now just to stop any uh, flies getting in there. Uh, yes, these, these containers are the cheapest containers I can get. They come in uh, silicon gaskets. I wrap them in PTFE, which does two things. I don't have to stress about the silicon. And two, uh, it makes the gaskets not quite airtight. So there is some gas exchange between the two. Uh, yes, in these jars, I do 100% get an angel's shear. Uh, but before we go any further, what I need to do is... I've just realized I haven't given you guys a rough idea of what this stuff tastes like at the moment. Uh, what I also have not done is say a huge, huge thank you to the Patreons. Thank you so much, Patreons. I thoroughly, thoroughly appreciate the financial support and I appreciate all the other stuff that goes into it as well. Um, the way you guys help me out and the ideas you give me, uh, the interaction we get over there is, is really awesome. So, th so thank you guys, I, I do appreciate it. All right, uh, what does this stuff taste like? How did it come out? Interesting, on the nose it is, uh, Smoky rum. <laughs> so not full on ashy smoke. Honestly, I can't remember exactly what was in that faints jar. If it wasn't whiskey or rum, uh, it wouldn't have made it in there, but kind of more on the woody side of smoke. Hmm, no, no full on peat ashiness, that's for sure. Uh, but a bright, almost a ripe pineapple rum flavor up front with a little bit of sort of grainy funk in between. Uh, I'm hoping that grainy funk cleans up a little bit and turns into more of a, um, like a whiskey kind of grain. Cause at the moment it's, it's not tails, but it almost is like that. Yeah, it's pretty similar on the, uh, on the palette. It does have quite a interesting sort of buttery vanilla thing going on already, um, which I am going to go out on a limb and guess that that is coming from the, uh, the wood age stuff that's in here. That's my guess. I don't know for sure, but uh, I have tried a couple of times now distilling stuff that has already been distilled and aged, and it's uh, it's quite an interesting outcome. Anyway, there we have it guys, uh, whiskey for free. Obviously it's not really for free. What I'm saying is you're taking a waste stream and making it go further. I'm happy with this. Uh, honestly, next time I'm going to keep the rum out of it. I'm gonna make a whiskey one and a rum one separate because uh, the two things fighting with each other is just a little bit odd, just a little bit. But I'm still expecting this to turn into something interesting uh, in, you know, six to 18 months. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, thumbs up, subscribe down below, and, and we'll catch you next time, guys. Keep on chasing the craft. See ya.